videos are coming out today so that we can celebrate the life of Sandra Carter, their beloved mother. As most of you know, Sandra passed away from this world on February 25th of this year. <clears throat> and because of the pandemic and all the things that are going on, <clears throat> the family decided to wait to have the memorial till today. And we do want to celebrate. Scott, Jenny, Caitlin, Jessica, Malia, Ava, and Eli. It is always difficult when we lose somebody. A mother, a mother-in-law, a grandmother. The past few months have been difficult, and at times I know they've seemed almost unbearable. Our hope today is that by honoring her this afternoon, we can remember the love, the joy, and the happiness that she freely gave each and every one of you every day that she was with you. I knew Sandra through my relationship with Scott as his brother-in-law. Holidays, birthdays, <clears throat> all of those activities we shared together often either in Scott's home or um, <clears throat> in uh, Paul and Judy or uh, Jenny's parents' home. <clears throat> and so earlier this week, Scott and I had a conversation just to go over what it is that he wanted to make sure that we relayed from his memories about his mom. And so I have a couple of those here. We're going to sing a song um, after that. Then Malia's going to get up and share some of her memories. Scott will have some of his memories. I have some notes from the kids uh, and family who wanted to have their memories remembered. <coughs> so let's start. <coughs> Scott reminded me that when she talked about her grandchildren and her children, she simply reminded him every time that they were her life. Time spent with them to her was precious. She loved the song, You Are My Sunshine. That's why, as you look around, all of the posters are yellow. <clears throat> she loved the song and whether it was mom or Graham or bubble it was clear that each of you were in fact her sunshine Scott and I talked about several other things as we thought how to honor Sandra one of them was a remembrance of his parents as adoptive parents <clears throat> he told me his parents weren't able to have children, so they adopted two children and took them into a loving home. He said, we were raised where being adopted was nothing we felt made us different. Adopting children to be your own is such a wonderfully loving thing to do. She loved her kids more than anything. And I can tell you, as an adoptive parent myself, I know... I understand that feeling. Sandra cherished the idea of family. <clears throat> and she wanted to anchor in her children the idea that they were not different, that they were in fact her children. <clears throat> His mom wanted to be sure that Malia and I always stayed close. It worried her to actually think that we might <clears throat> drift apart. 
She often asked me to promise her I would stay close to her, which of course I told her I would do. I, I was raised in a way to understand the importance and specialness of staying close to siblings and what it meant to mom that we couldn't drift apart or wouldn't. The sense of family extended to talking about the old days and relatives that Scott or Malia didn't know and having them look at old pictures, anchoring in them in that sense of family and the continuation of that family through their own children. Sandra cherished friends and often spoke of special memories. Her love of spending summers and visiting relatives downstate in Gillespie, having her Aunt Beth take her downtown on the train and shop at Marshall Field, and the friendships that she maintained spanning over 60 years with kids from her childhood. It was not uncommon to see those families celebrating with our family, he said, to feel like our family, to feel just like they were part of our family, as they were around as early as we could remember. She so loved her friends. Sandra's life, <clears throat> she cherished laughter. Laughter fills the soul with joy, and Sandra's sense of humor, which was passed on from her mother and grandmother, was a constant and important part of who she was. It will be a lasting memory for the family as they remember those happy memories of hearing her laughing at the smallest thing. Sandra was a loving wife of 53 years. She took care of her beloved Harold by herself probably long beyond what she should have as he, <clears throat> rather than putting him in a nursing home but she loved him and wanted to spend her time with him and take care of him herself. Her dedication and love were always paramount to her. When he was gone, It was hard, and his passing in 2016 was very hard for her to bear. But instead, she turned her love to her children and to her grandchildren and their family. Scott recalled, we loved the treasure of the times my mom and dad slept over. It was special for us, even when my mom would yell at my dad for falling asleep. Gosh darn it, Harold, wake up. <laughs> Every time we come over here, you fall asleep. <laughs> These will be words I will hear in my mind and will make me smile forever. One of the greatest memories Scott reminded me of was when he took his mom and dad with Malia and family to Hawaii, a trip they never would have been able to take on their own. He said that trip was so special to mom in so many different ways. And we all shared that same feeling. Heaven on Earth is how my mom described Hawaii. It was so special to share all those memory moments of that trip with her. Nobody wanted it to end. Sandra was much loved as a mother-in-law. Scott told me, although my mom was willing to talk, she was not one to meddle in the affairs of her kids' marriage. And Jenny's care and love for Sandra was unrelenting. And the love that Sandra felt for Jenny was very obvious. It is impossible to capture the summation of someone's life in a few simple words. The years filled in times of joy, in times of trial and tears, all the events that make us what we are as people. Sandra had a life filled with love and being loved. And what more could you ask? Growing old is a natural part of life, as is death. 
Sandra no longer suffers any of the physical pain that she had to deal with near the end of her life. Her life was spent saying, I love you. Cherish it and the memories that you always have. Celebrate her life. Scott summed up <clears throat> his thoughts with this simple claim. My mom may have not been financially rich, but the impact she had and what she left behind, no money could ever have bought. Oftentimes when I <clears throat> end up reading at a funeral, I read this poem. Some of you may have heard it before. Um, it was written <clears throat> in the 60s by a woman named Lois Cheney, who was in a book called God is No Fool. <clears throat> and I, I thought it was appropriate for us to look at this morning, so I'm going to 